70% plus hotels, etc. Get you deals on everything like cruises, car rentals, even movies, restaurants, entertainment, theme parks, and much, much more. Now you're thinking, this is going to cost me thousands. Well, think again. The low, low price will blow you away. Plus, if you join right now, you can try hotels, etc. absolutely free for 72 hours. Wake up, people. Try it free for three days. No cost, no obligation. So now you have your vacation and your money, too. Never pay full price again. Join hotels, etc. right now and slash your travel and entertainment costs up to 70%. Call toll free. 877-967-7283. 877-967-7283. Or sign up online. Hotels, etc. dot com. That's H-O-T-E-L-S-E-T-C dot com. This is KC Pride from the number one rated business show, letting everybody out there know you can now catch us on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 3 to 4. Make sure you tune in. Dial the real 1100 AM. The following program is paid for by Influencer 365. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the views of this station. It's management or the Beasley Media Group. And we are back right here on The Real 1100 AM. I'm your host, KC Pride. We are popping all over the world today through iHeartRadio to all our fans in Africa, India, and all over the world. In studio with me, we got a great show, and I got a great man in studio the whole hour. We got Rodney Perry. He's going to share with us. Before we get started, though, because I know everybody been asking me all week, what do you got, what do you got, what do you got? Uh, we got a few announcements. We always got to get out of the way. Uh, number one, I got to say, uh, so thank you so much to uh, Mr. Daniel Dickey for the invite uh, for the Black Media Mixer last night. I had a blast on the panel with uh, Kiana Dancy, uh, Praise Jackson, Daniel Dickey, uh, Dylon, and, and my new friend, uh, Nico Flo. So we had a great time on the panel. And uh, if the next time this coming up, I promise y'all, y'all need to get involved with this Black Media Mixer. Uh, to all my folks out in the Douglasville area, I want y'all to go visit my personal barber out at 6405 Fairburn Road. It's Studio 1211. You can call and book an appointment right there at 770-485-6772. Ask for Melvin. Tell him KC Pride sent you. And he will even give you a free cut on the real 1100 AM. That's right, Greg. We talking to y'all now. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you are out in this Smyrna area and you want to get your buff on, want to look sexy like KC, uh, I want you to go see my good friends over at Titans Fitness. Uh, it's a world-class training facility ran by my friend Daniel Stuckert, which is a world champion, and his wife, uh, Rachel, who is a world-class bodybuilder herself. Also, she does all of my impact training. Uh, you can visit them at 1834 South Cobb Industrial Boulevard right there in Smyrna, Georgia. Or you can visit them online at Titans.net. Tell them KC Pride sent you, and they will give you a free training session on me. <clears throat> Lastly, everybody said, hey, these masterminds, we love them, but we need y'all to slow it down a little bit. We want something a little bit more intimate. So we are launching our Rockstar Master classes that's right 2022 we want you to start building your business with a bang you can join us this tuesday uh from 6 30 to 8 30 p.m it's going to be a virtual class it will be going out to my mail list join us at influencer365.com Woo! all right i gotta calm it down <laughs> you got in there <laughs> uh in studio with me like i promise the one and only rodney perry Man, thank you so much for joining us here today, brother. I like them clap. That was hot. <laughs> well done, sir. It took me a year to get them claps going. So, <laughs> but now, nah, man, what you got going on, man? What's been going on with you, brother? What's been going on, man? I'm just working, you know, taking care of the family. You know, we're coming out of the pandemic, so you're kind of getting back to what, what's normal. Okay. If, if you can. And um, so I'm back touring, um, going out and, you know, traveling most weekends and, 
and um you know and you know just kind of shoring up my business i talked to my good friend the other day she was like what's your plan going into 2022 and i always sit down around this time every year and kind of formulate the way i want to go into the first quarter of the year oh yeah oh yeah and so so i'm just getting ready to kind of do that and and you know doing some merchandise stuff with my my comedy doing some um some movies, some TV. Okay. Uh, I got a movie coming out at the top of 22 called Easter Sunday. I did with a comedian, Joe Coy. Okay. Uh, which I'm, I'm super excited about because he's a Filipino. And I think this movie could do for Filipinos what Crazy Rich Agents did for the wow. Asian world. And uh, so you know, I'm excited my, my girls have Filipino. So my daughters is half Filipino. We, we need all y'all to be at this movie theater. <laughs> I'm going to you know, be there, bro. But you know, you know Joe Coy then. So he, he, he's really a, a big deal in that, in that world. And so I'm excited about that. That's a big movie. Uh, Steven Spielberg producing. Okay. And uh, so, so biggest movie I've been in the, been in as of late. And uh, and I just did an episode of uh, Our Kind of People. Okay. Uh, which is a um, it's a a, a a black show with uh, about the upper crux of the black world. You know? Okay. And uh, it ain't so, one of the ones, but they want to get all ratchet with it, is it now? They ain't super ratchet, but they, you know, it, it, it's a drama. So it, okay, something gonna happen. <laughs> you know? But uh, but you know, just just been working, man, and taking care of the kids and the wife, and you know, coming out of Thanksgiving, you know, and and being fat, you know. <laughs> now, 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 I need to get like you. I went that nice, nice t slim. I had to get it off. Man. <laughs> but now, tell me this: what is it like getting back to it? Because I, I noticed even yesterday, myself being on the panel and being in front of folks. You know, actually being in the room and the stuff, everything yeah. live now. It, it's a, it's a little it's different. A little I got that nervous, yeah, yeah. I got that nervous energy again. What's that like for you? Because you get major crowds, bro. I mean, I mean, you know, more than anything, man. It's I realized during the pandemic is I need that. Okay, I need it. Oh yes, you know, I I I was at home, you know, last year probably around June, going, what am I doing? Okay, I didn't I didn't know how to cope, and and I leaned into the internet and kind of built my internet presence, my social media and all that stuff. And so now as we get back to real life, you know, you don't want to forget that stuff. The, the the internet following you built over the pandemic, you don't want to to leave those people just in the wind. Oh yeah. You back working. Oh yeah. And so you you, you got to find a way. Like even today when you said come do the interview, I was like, uh is it really you want to come up in there? <laughs> I got the whole setup in the basement. So we can do this virtual. But but at the same time, ain't nothing like people, man. The oh, yeah. connection with people. And so I'm I'm doing some stuff like that. And, and you, you talked about a, a a virtual class you're doing. Yes. Well, I do an improv workshop, and so I'm taking that. Uh, I'm doing a a, a retreat. Okay. With, with 25 people in a house for two days. Wow. And and we're it's gonna be labor intensive. We're gonna you know any it just it's gonna be just a game. Okay. You know as as we navigate you know our careers. It's stuff you just don't know sometimes. Oh yeah. And so we're gonna just be giving people game for, for 48 hours and uh and rock it out. So I'm gonna Man, that sounds that. awesome. That'll, that'll be like the end of the first quarter, like March. Wow, that sounds like something I want to take advantage of. Now, now, how is it that you get into this whole comedy world? Like, like what is it? Is at some point you know I crack the best jokes in the class, or <laughs> like what is it? Because it's not easy to step on that stage by yourself, just you and that mic. So right. so what is it that drives you to do this? Uh I'm I'm insane. <laughs> I mean, to walk on the stage to attempt to make people laugh that don't know you yeah. is complete insanity. But I I gotta have it. And uh, to, as, to answer your question as to what started it, I was in second grade, and I had a teacher that would let me tell jokes at the end of the day if I shut up. Wow, <laughs> you know, I was that disruptive, you know. And luckily, that teacher, Mr. Thompson, had the wherewithal to take that little boy and be like, "Look, maybe if we try some stuff." That maybe besides just punishing him is not working. Okay. So let's let's let him perform. Why yeah. not? See what happens. And uh many years later, I'm a performer for a living. Wow. And uh so uh it's it's not for the faint of heart. No, it's not. You know, and and I meet people all the time. What do I do? How do I, how do I become a comedian? Well, you gotta you got it's the only thing you can just start doing. Okay. You know, no classes. I mean, they are there are classes nowadays, but but I didn't have any classes. But it, it, it ain't really something that you can't teach that though. I like could. some of the greats, like like looking at Richard Pryor, or well, well, well uh, it's like anything. There, there's a one plus one equal two to it. Okay, but you can't teach certain elements. You can't teach funny. Okay, but I can teach you how to tell a joke. All right, you can teach that happen to be funny. I can okay. teach timing. Right. I can, and so like, and there are some great comics that aren't funny human beings. Okay, 
you know, you don't have to be a funny human being to be a great comedian. You have wow. to know the structure of how to tell a joke. Okay. You know what I mean? But funny human beings, there's some, I, like, I went to high school with funny guys okay. that would never get on stage. I got you. You know what I mean? So there's a delicate balance. Now, now who you see who you see killing the game right now? Because, I, I mean, David Chappelle, bro, yeah. it's like everything that man say is, is just not, it's, it's turning into gold, bro. I mean, Dave Chappelle, to me, is the GOAT right now. Okay. I mean, Richard Pryor is still the, the GOAT of all GOATs. He seemed like, he, he kind of fall into that, the Richard Pryor of our day, you know? Mm, yes and no. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Dave Chappelle is more Dick Gregory than Richard Pryor. Okay, yeah, because he liked to teach. He, he's he's a teach. He's a teacher. He 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 um he's the type of guy that's that's looking at what's happening on the landscape of humanity and talking about that. Richard Pryor talked about his life. Okay, so you you're from one or two schools of thought as a comedian, and you're either uh Dick Gregory style of comic, okay, uh or Richard Pryor. And Richard Pryor and Bill Cosby seem like polar opposites, but they were really kind of the same. Okay. In terms of you know expounding on what their 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 background was, I, I got a chance to see some of his stand up as a young as a young kid. You know, watching HBO specials and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and it, it's funny to see that part of of Bill uh, Bill Cosby versus seeing you know Bill Huxtable. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it was, yeah. it was, it's funny to see yeah, that yeah. distinction. And, and, and you know, Bill Cosby, man, he, he don't get a lot of credit, but you know, he was at one point he was the only black man on television. Oh yeah. You know, so showing he, us how we need to be. Showing <laughs> us how we need to be, and and which. Maybe ultimately, maybe was it's a part of his undoing. So, but yeah. don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, who are some of those greats you kind of grew up? Because I, 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 I can go back to the Red Foxes, uh, the the Bernie Max. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what's my guy, man? That that, that uh, Baby's kids. What's his name? Uh, Robin Harris. Yeah, Robin Harris. I, I, I bear, I bear uh, uh, comparisons to Robin Harris. You know, sometimes for my stature and stuff like that, you know, people are like, his wife stopped me. You, you mad me a Robin. Like, <laughs> you know, you feel good. They, they all from, you know, Bernie's from my hometown. Okay. Robin is from my hometown. You know, we were all from the Midwest, from Chicago. But, uh, Chicago who, must just produce comedians, man, because all y'all come got, out of there. Chicago got some comics. Uh, Corey Holcomb, uh, Dion Cole, you know, my contemporaries, uh, uh, Damon Williams, great Chicago comedian. And, 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 you know, Lil Rail, who is hot right now, great okay. Chicago comedian. It's so many, uh, you know something about that mid that Midwest water. Oh yeah, you know, you know what I mean? but uh, as it's far cold as, as hell. I know that <laughs> you definitely gonna stand in the house and think about something funny. You know, but I, I tell you all the time, everybody in Chicago funny. Oh yeah, your mama funny, your grandmama <laughs> funny, your uncle funny, your daddy funny. Everybody funny, and so you might get roasted by your mama. <laughs> what you doing with that stupid ass shirt on? You know, you you be like, wait a minute, mama. So so that that type of stuff happens all the time. But in terms of uh. Uh, who's hot right now? Uh, I'm still a Kevin Hart fan. Okay. I'm still a Cat Williams fan. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cat is, is, is that guy. Um, uh, Tony Roberts, have you ever seen him? Get it. You see his name, go see him. Okay. Um, JB Smooth, you okay. see his name, go see him. He's on Kirby O's. He's enthusiasm right now. Okay. And uh, who else? I mean, it's it's so many. Lil Rel, I just listened to his album the other day, man. It's, it's so many funny guys out there. Now, now what opportunities? And girls. Is you know, Keisha oh, Dancy, you mentioned her name. Oh, yeah. That's See, my, I was on the panel with yours. Right I don't say nothing to her wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's my homie right there. <laughs> now, 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 tell me this. What, what's this new world of comedy like? Because you got so many different opportunities. Uh, You see so many folks use Instagram to kind of blow up and do the influencer thing. So what's uh, what's the opportunities in comedy nowadays? Well, I'll take you back a bit. So when, when I came up through, when I was in my formative years, it was all about getting on television and or film. Okay. And now you can get famous from here. Oh yeah, your phone. You literally, you know, uh, people like Desi Banks, people like uh, Country Wayne. Oh yeah, Country Wayne have blowing made it up on a Instagram. Career. I mean, and dude, it's a viable source of income. I mean, Facebook is putting people thirty, forty thousand dollars a month Whew. in their pocket every month. Okay, you know, but then you you you're you're uh, subject to Facebook. Oh yeah, you know, if you you do one thing that takes you off, off of their their uh, standards and practices, they cut all that money. money going like yeah. that. Yeah, and so uh, one one thing uh, th this young man, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, his name escapes me right now, but he started to pull people out of the Facebook world. Okay, he created an app, and uh, and uh, I'm just I'm just uh, Kev on stage. Okay, Kev on stage. Kev on stage created an app, and so he pulled people out of the social media world and into his real life world. So now they subscribe to the app, and now he he runs the, he runs he may have an opportunity to create a a platform that's biggest 
Netflix. Wow. Oh, yeah. You know, so it, it's got to start somewhere. So um, we have more power than we ever had. Oh, yeah. I think. Definitely. Especially yeah. with it in your own hands nowadays. You you can you can create it. Can oh, create yeah. It. No. Now, now, what do you do in this day and age? Because Netflix is starting, finally starting to be fed us. Because I, I remember at one point they was lowballing us on movies like crazy. Oh, they star. Oh, oh so <laughs> they <ain't> changed <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you see black faces on there, but what you won't see is Netflix originals. Okay. So, so I'm Netflix. You got an original project. You know, you 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 produce something. You can bring that to me. Okay. But I'm not gonna Netflix go to you and be like, give me that. And let's put some money behind. You're top two percent of black. Okay. Kevin Hart can go. Chappelle can go. Okay. Rock can go, but me and you can't. I got you. You feel me? Okay. But you'll see a random, you know, Caucasian <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all in there. <laughs> you know, so, it's yeah. a mess. Now, now the 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 whole world of comedy right now, uh, it, everybody is just ready to explode. Twenty twenty two is going to be an amazing year for. I think, so. I, I think everybody. What what does that look like for you as far as like the tours, the merch, you know, the movies coming out? What what you what well it, it all kind of plays together. Okay. You know, uh if if your if your if your movies pop, if your social pop, then your tour pop. Okay. You know, and, and it, so it all kind of works hand in hand. And then you gotta have the merch if you're going on tour, you gotta do this, that, and the other. So it's it's all kind of working together, man. And like you said, I can feel it. Oh yeah. You know, I, I've seen these moments in my career and you know, right on the cusp. Like I, I've I've always been ahead of the power curve. Okay. Like I was doing viral videos in two two thousand. Okay. But I was so far out that it was like by the time I got sick of it, exactly that's when it hit. That's when everybody so, was watching on YouTube by the time near well. I always yeah. I always tell people it's very tough to be a visionary because yeah. a lot of time you're so far out out ahead of the pack that you you lose interest before it hit. Oh yeah, and so you gotta you gotta have the the wherewithal to stay the course. So uh, if y'all out there, you doing your thing, and you're like, man, I'm it's so far away. Your exit could be next. Oh yeah. So so keep running. No, that, that that's, that's such beautiful advice because it has been so many times. It was something I started a couple years. Folks didn't jump onto it, and then a couple years later, you see somebody else that they got it, and you're now they're doing it. You're ahead of the yeah. power curve. You so yeah, far. I get you. Your car too fast. <laughs> <laughs> now getting into this whole world of acting. Is that something that becomes natural to you, just being a comedian? Is that acting for you, or is that, I'm just up here being myself? Acting is acting is not acting, but at the same time, it's like I, I began to act, so I'm a stand up first. And what I noticed, the guys that were stand ups that were coming home from gigs, was always working, were also actors. Wow! And so, and I saw that I was like, I need to get an acting class, so I started taking classes. I studied with Tasha Smith, who is, you know, in everything now, directing everything now. And she was my acting coach for like five or six years. And I still use those techniques now. And, um, you know, I worked with her last year on, on Tales over on BET. And uh, she's directing this show I just did called Our Our Kind of Family and Our Kind of People. And um, and you, you have to get training. Okay. You won't circumvent training. You might not go to college, right. but you're going to spend some time in school. Well, we'll be right back after this, uh, right here on The Real 1100 AM. We're going to come back and we're going to dig all into this acting career and these movies that we got coming out next year. Uh, stay tuned. I'm your host, KC Pride. I'm here with Rodney Perry. Uh, you're listening to The Real 1100 AM. KC! <laughs> At Align for Life, we work with attorneys across the entire metro area. We are a portal of entry provider, meaning we can ensure your client is triaged accordingly and coordinate all aspects of your client's chiropractic and medical care from start to finish, including referrals to medical doctors, specialists, and imaging. This is Dr. Fowler. Your injury clients deserve the best transportation, extended hours, and compliance monitoring. We understand your needs. Refer your injury and accident victims right now by calling us at 404-383-1110 or visit us at yourfinespine.com. Transportation is provided via Uber and we are open late so your clients can come in after work. Auto accidents, wellness care, slip and fall. We take care of it all. 
And now, an important message from Steve Harvey. This pandemic isn't over yet. We got the vaccines. I got mine. You might have yours. But listen to this. Don't think just because you got the vaccine that you could just go crazy. Follow the current safety guidelines. I know the mask is hot. But you know what's hotter than these masks? Staying healthy. That's pretty fly if you ask me. Let's unite to prevent. For more information, visit unitetoprevent.org. Have you been looking for a radio station that gives you sports? I don't believe it! It's a touchdown! Entertainment? Are you not entertained? And other special interest talk shows? Well, isn't that special? All on one app? Yo, that's dope. What app is that? It's the real 1100 AM app for WWE. Grab it for free in your Google Play or Apple App Store today. What's going on out there, people? This is Mr. Daniel Dickey, the Renaissance Man, founder of the Resource Guild, and you are tuned in to the number one rated business show with my dude, Casey Pride. And we are back right here on the Real 1100 AM iHeartRadio, taking in all over the world. I'm your host, Casey Pride, and in studio with us today, we got the one and only Rodney Perry. R.P. <laughs> now, finish, finishing this conversation off, getting into this acting world, mm-hmm. uh, getting started in this whole acting world, what is that like? What is it like getting started, man? It's it's scary. Okay. You know, I mean, you, you question yourself, like, can I remember? Okay. Can I remember lines? Okay. You know, that, that was- You my, really had to memorize all that stuff. They ain't just throwing them to you every well, five seconds. Ain't nobody throwing nothing to you. Okay. <laughs> you definitely want to be, but you know, TV is different than a play. It is different than a movie. Okay. So, uh, say for instance, if you are, if you are uh, a TV guy, you only have to do certain scenes. Okay. At a time. So, uh, like we did that first segment, a scene might be two pages. Okay. And so you just remember the scene. You just know what happens in the scene, and then the words just connect. Okay. You know, the words start to make sense. You know, I'm, I I do, I work with um, uh, Bentley Kyle Evans, who who directed Martin, Early Days of Martin, right? Okay. And you, I go out there and work with Bentley. He he, book, he put me in like seven, eight different scenes, right? But they had different episodes. So I get paid X amount of dollars per episode. But mm-hmm. I, I might go out there and shoot all of it at once. So each scene, I got to put myself in that, that situation. You, if that make any sense. That, that that was my next question. Like, how do you draw that emotion? Where do you get that emotion from to just jump in and sing and, and, and fill it with the emotion and well, well, the I'm right doing, thing for I'm the conversation? Comedy, so I just know how to do comedy. Okay. Right. But sometimes you're doing drama. Yeah. You know, this this thing I did I did the other day, I did drama. And we had to do different takes. They got to shoot. See, cause, you know, you, you don't trip off TV because you're watching it. But so they're going to shoot you. Okay. They're going to shoot her. Okay. You know, come across here, they're going to turn around, they're going to shoot me, but you still got to do your stuff every time. Yeah. Whether they own you or not. Yeah. Because you you helping me out. Okay. You know, and so you got you to gotta shoot the whole world. He, he doing that, but we still going to shoot him. <laughs> he going to be the same way every time. And and so it's um the how is, is different for each medium. Okay. So now a play, I'm going to have to memorize the whole play. I'm going to have to... Lying. Everybody lines, but what happens with a play, they have what they call blocking. Okay. So every any any given moment during the play, you should be in a certain place. Okay. So now you start connecting the words with the location. Okay, I gotta be over there by that by the radio. I gotta I gotta play the piano during that moment. So I that's my that's my lines I have to do with that. Okay. You know, and so how about this? Your brain just works. <laughs> the human brain is amazing. <laughs> and when you when you ask it to do certain things, it'll do it. Wow. If you say anything to yourself 21 times, you memorized it. Wow, really? Absolutely. That that's amazing because you know, I, I teach the same principle. It takes 21 days to create a habit. Mm-hmm. So it, it's amazing to say I, I've never heard somebody say that, but that's I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that out. <laughs> but you you would be surprised what you can retain. Okay. You know, and like say if you, even with comedy, right? I, I right before I walk on the set, I'll write out my set list. Okay. That's just fusing it in my mind. And then I ball it up and throw it away. Okay. And I go back if I go back to that piece of paper, I will have went in order with everything I said I want to do. Wow. Give or take one or two things. Now, when you when you start to approach this, because a lot of folks don't know it's a lot of stuff going on in your head when you're on the stage. You oh, ain't absolutely. Y'all ain't just into it like you think. I'm looking at y'all, I'm looking at this person. Like what's some of the stuff that's going through your mind as you kind of <laughs> working the stage and doing these things? Great. That's the all the best question I've ever been asked. 
comics don't even understand it. Okay. Because as you get better as a comedian, you are you're processing more information. Okay. So when I was first starting, I was only processing what I was doing right now. Okay. Now, 30 years in the game, I'm 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 going through my mind, I'm cycling through jokes, what I want to do right now at this moment. I'm also looking at my audience. Okay. Why is her arms folded like that? Okay. And I'm going, okay, I know what she needs. I, I go to my Rolodex in my head, pull out that joke that I know it's gonna get her, throw that mug out there, she busts out <laughs> laughing. I move on. I might look at her. Oh, she a little young. She she's in her, her young 20s. It's my daughter. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna hit her with I'm gonna hit her in that area. Okay. And I'm making all this decisions on the fly. Wow. Real time. And I'm I'm having a dialogue with myself. Right? <laughs> you, right? you are killing. <laughs> you murdering this joint right now. You know, or I think you about the bomb. <laughs> you know, I'm going through all that. In real time. Wow. Now, yeah. do you still have those moments? Have you bombed lately? I ain't you're, bombed in a while. I was gonna say you you tripping on bomb no more. I ain't bombed in a while, but it can happen any moment. Like what but what is it? Is it just a bad joke and you gotta pick it up and roll past? It could it? be anything, man. Okay. Like like I did a joke uh this past weekend. I was in Columbia, South Carolina working, and I never done the joke before, but I did it because it just felt good. I throw it out, and the, the punchline just didn't do what I wanted to do. Okay, it didn't bomb. Like I didn't get booed or nothing, but the la like on a scale of one to ten, I should have got like eight, a okay. nine laugh. I got like a six. Okay. And I'm like, I'm, I dropped the ball somewhere in the setup. Okay. You know, I dropped the ball. And lazy, you took too long. You know, I was like, maybe, maybe it was the timing. <laughs> maybe it was the timing. <laughs> but you know, timing is everything too. So yeah. You can miss a joke just on a, a slight, a slight miscue. Okay. And so you just got to be always conscious of it and and you know how to pick it up and. Sometimes you pick it up with personality. Okay. Sometimes you pick it up with with uh with uh, another joke, you know. And uh so it, it's uh it's again it's not for the faint of heart, man. Ah oh, man, I know it ain't. <laughs> I didn't feel but on that you stage do it stuff. here. Oh you yeah. You do it here, like you got to guess in the guess is whack. You had to you had to you had to pick it up. Oh, yeah. You got to ask me. You got to get a lot of light on <laughs> You got a game in there somewhere you can go to. You got you know you got the you you you've learned over time how to keep the show moving whether oh, my yeah. guess is cracking or not. Oh yeah. Or you can just put them out, and y'all two can do the show. <laughs> <laughs> right, I didn't have some folks in here that trying to promote their stuff. It's like pulling nails. Like, come on, tell everybody now, please. Right. <laughs> but no, I, I I definitely get you on that. Now, you you uh, it, it's just a whole artistry to the just to the whole performance mechanism and the whole the whole thing to it. And you say it's something that you can actually teach. How do you teach art? Because it's like even in I just opened a print shop, like I was telling mm -hmm. you. And screen print is art. It ain't science. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you can't just walk in here and say, exactly. well, I know what to do because it ain't going to be right. right. So how do you teach that art? Because that's experience there, brother. Well, it's, it's like if we were painting okay. or screen printing, uh, there's, there's a, a, again, there's a one plus one that equals two. Okay. So there are some nuts and bolts to what you do. Okay. Right. And you can teach that. Okay. You can teach the nuts and bolts. I can't teach you to be funny, but you may not need to be funny to be a good comedian. Wow. You know, you could be like a, a, a Seinfeld or something. Just kind of like I'm not weird saying observation. Seinfeld ain't funny. <laughs> you know, he's humorous, but it ain't, I ain't going to be rolling in the floor laughing at it. It's because you're black. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a whole nother thing. That's culture that we get into culture. That's a whole I nother guess. conversation. I always... But, but, uh, the, the, the reality is you can, I can teach, I can teach writing. Okay. I can teach uh, creating a joke. Uh, what I can't teach is love. Okay. Because I believe you have to have a love for it to 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 do it when there's no money. You got to have a love for it to to do it when uh, when your wife is like you know. So what are we gonna eat tonight? Oh yeah. So you know what I'm saying. So as you as you navigate that, that's gonna put you through when you when you don't, you don't have you're not sure and nothing else. Now now that I'm glad you said that. How do you being such a busy Comedian, such a busy movie star and everything else. How do you balance that that work and home thing? Because it is so easy to before you know it. I ain't been home in a week or two or, or, or something like that. So how do you balance that? Uh, it, it's been tough over the years. You know, I miss some. I miss some days. Okay. I miss some significant moments. Um, you know, sometimes uh, we was around for the holidays and they start talking about different moments. I'm like, well, what was I? At? Oh, you was wow. out of town, Daddy. I was like, oh, yeah, dang it. Okay, but you know. I'm also at home more than the guy that works a 40 hour week job. Oh yeah. Cause I'm home. I'm home all day today. 
You know, I'm home Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If I'm not working that weekend, I'm home. I'm home okay. all the time. And so, uh, but when I'm gone, I'm gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I'm gone, I get on the plane Thursday evening. I might not be back to next Monday. Wow. Okay. And and I'm, I'm, I might do 40 weeks a year like that. Whew. So when I'm there, I'm there. And when I'm not, I'm not. And and you just try to be there for significant moments. My daughter got a, a recital on the second. Guess who's gonna be there? Oh yeah, I need parents gonna be in the building yelling and screaming. But I mean, just the I I, I know at some point because I it's always a sacrifice that you always got to make to be ambitious anywhere in life. It's like, and I ain't saying it's a sacrifice worth it because you you can't even say that about family. Mm -hmm. But to be writing a period for them now instead of you know yeah, there's my dad and all this type of stuff. But when you show up, I'm writing a period. You know that's a whole different experience for your kids. So is it? Yeah. They, 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 they're more in tune to it than I am sometimes. Okay. Like, uh, so my, my oh, here, here goes the balance. My son completely used it. <laughs> I know it. I know. My son, like, yo, <laughs> Roddy Perry, son, what? Let me in. You know, he, you know, he's twenty seven, so he, he rocking out wherever he can. My daughters, uh, are a little different. You know, they, 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 they want a picture, daddy. Yeah, they looking at you. Why do people looking at you? And so you know, we go through that with my with my girls, you know. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, we all get we all get used to it. It becomes okay. the normal. My normal is just not the normal of any other guy. And, and so, and they don't know nothing else. Okay, they don't know like the dude that's working forty hours a week. They don't know that guy. I got you, you know, because I mean, I was in the Navy. I served in the Navy for wow. uh, for eight years. Uh, but my wife remembers that, but my kids really don't. Wow. Now. Uh, Steve Harvey loves telling his story about, you know, having to, he went through divorce and uh, lived in a uh, home for, uh, lived in his car for about three years or, or whatever. Anything like that at the start of your career? Did you have to suffer like that in the beginning? I mean, we all suffer. I didn't suffer that way. Okay. <laughs> I had, we all got I had, some. I, know. I had some cars repoed though. <laughs> I had a, uh, what I had, I had a, um, I had a Dodge Neon and, and the worst purchase I ever made was a, a Ford Taurus. My wife had to have that car, and I got that daggone car. And that, was, that car stayed broke. Stayed. Oh, you can't get me in the Ford right now because of that car. And it was just a raggedy little car, man. And uh, and I just just stopped paying the notes. And that dude, I remember, I remember the dude came and get it. Done. So the repo dude was gangster. Okay. He called me one day. Get this. He called me one day. Repo, repo man. He said, "Hey man, you good man?" I said, "Who is this?" He said, "Right, you pay right." I said, "Yeah." He said, man, you good, man. I said, well, who is this? He said, I'm the repo man. You've been hiding your car for six months. He said, I usually would have got it by now. But guess what? I'm going to get it. I'm going to get your damn car. I was like, what, what you talking about? He said, man, don't even. I know this you. I know where you live, and you've been hiding the car. You are good. But I'm going to get it. Oh, my I know God. you got a baby coming. <laughs> so the repo man watching you. If I get your car. <laughs> I'm throwing everything away. Oh my goodness! So what you can do, you can take take everything out, leave it on the street tomorrow, and we good. Mm. I was tired. <laughs> I was tired because I would have to I would have to literally park my car like four blocks away. Okay. Five blocks away. <laughs> and uh, he said he couldn't catch me. And uh, that next day, I took everything out, parked it on the street. And uh, the thing about credit and money and goodwill, it all passes. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, th those times were tough, but we made it through. Oh yeah, I tell for a lot of time. You get it back. You will get it back. <laughs> you put get it back. Put that on the shirt. <laughs> we just put the revenue on that. Well, you will get it back. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Well said. So, uh, you know, coming up to your career, thirty years, man, that is that is amazing of doing what you want to do. What does that feel like? Oh man, ain't nothing like doing what you want to do when you want to do it. <laughs> oh yeah. All day, every day. I man, I can't imagine going to work for somebody. I can't imagine. I know that's right. I can't imagine waking up and having to be somewhere. And don't get me wrong, when you work on TV or or even in entertainment, something like I used to write for Steve Harvey. Okay. Steve Harvey has a, had a show called Steve Harvey's Big Time, and me and who is nephew Tommy now, we were, okay. we were two of the writers, and um, they used to re require us to be in at nine a.m. and we had to work from nine to five. It didn't take that long. We would literally be working a real four hours a day. <laughs> But they wanted to, to work an eight hour, yeah. nine hour day. And and me and Tom were like, dude, we ain't we want y'all here. Cause they felt like you had if, if you, you hear you doing you, something, yeah. You pay we paying you, you should be here. And so that was it, that was their philosophy. Everybody in entertainment don't operate like that though. 
Oh, no. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that was just a lesson learned, man. And uh, half the day, we, we, we played dominoes down in Steve's dressing room. <laughs> And if he beat you, you had to sit there the whole time. No, uh, no. What's working with Steve Harvey like? Uh, wealth of knowledge. Okay. I mean, he would, hey, riding the P, let me ask you a question. You sure you want this? What you, what you mean, Steve? He, are you sure you want this? See, see, I can't go to Applebee's with my family. I can go to the, to the mall and walk around because it turned into something else. So you got to ask yourself when it don't matter if you want this. Okay. And so he would have little jewels like that all day, every day, you know. And like, like I watched him do business. You know, we talk about business. This dude would um do all kind of stuff. Like, say for instance, like you remember when like the pointy toe shoes got high? Oh yeah, yeah. He had them for anybody had. Them. <laughs> he was Steve Harvey suits. He, he, and I saw him when he was when he first was looking at the fabrics and stuff for the suit. We was working for him then, and so it was just it was just amazing to see that a comedian was also such a really good businessman. And uh, I, I was impressed with that guy. Now, do you ever think there'll be another Kings of Comedy? You think they'll ever do that again? Uh, it might be something like it, but I don't know if you could call it the same thing. You know, I think it'd have to be something else, something new, something fresh, you know. Uh, and then you have to get the old Kings to sign off on it. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like a pass in the toys. Yeah, it, it would have to be. So who is going to be? DC Young Fly? Uh... Who else? Who? Who? Because that was a, that was a perfect storm. Yeah. The Kings of Comedy. That was. Uh, he had the right folks at the right Steve, time. Steve, who was the hottest, li li literally. Bernie, who was probably the best comedian. Oh yeah. Said who was probably the second best comedian, and DL, who is better now than he was then. Yeah. And so it was just a perfect storm, and they were all on television, except Bernie, and Bernie got on television shortly after. Yeah. So. um yeah, I don't know if it can happen again, man. I think it would be something similar, maybe, but who knows? You missed the do you miss some of the old the old joints you just come on like Def Jam? Uh I miss Comic used, View. Okay. Yeah, Comic, Comic View was, was awesome too. I miss Comic View. I'll tell you why. Because Comic View is lost. Think about it. You don't you don't see no reruns of Comic View. That's true. You don't see no like you can still catch it. And Jam all y'all came up through Comic View, like all the bad community, like the the I mean, biggest, baddest ones. I mean Bruce Bruce, Bruce, Arnaz J. Uh, Jamario, Jamario. It's so many comics in there, all lost. There's no, you can't listen to it on, on Sirius. Okay, ain't no digital recordings of it. And so, whoever owns that content is just letting it sit sit somewhere. Wow. And so that would be money for all of us. I mean, I was on, I was on comedy eight times. Wow. You know that that that's digital royalties. I would I would be getting for for that. That and that show was huge, man. That thing ran for years. Yeah. So you think a good ten years of Funny gone, man. Well, uh, real quick, we're gonna take a break right here on the real 1100 AM. I'm your host, KC Pride. Uh, to all my fans everywhere, all my friends, we're all Rodney Perry friends checking in today. <laughs> uh, thank y'all so much for tuning in. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Hi, this is Dr. Williams with Align for Life Wellness. I want to invite you to our new office at 1800 Jonesboro Road in Atlanta. Come in for a consultation, examination, therapy, and x-ray, all for just $100. What? Yes, $100. This offer expires soon, so call us to schedule at 404-383-1110 or find us on the web at www yourfinespine.com If you want to be fine, take care of your spine. We're open late. Being a teenager is tough. There's the constant pressure to be liked. Endless worrying about college. Cyberbullying, high expectations, all the negativity. There's no question. Being a teenager is tough. And what do Georgia's teens do when they want to block out the noise and clear their heads? We play! <laughs> Research shows that teenagers who participate in high school sports have lower stress levels, more confidence, and greater self-esteem. And then there's the biggest benefit of all. High school sports are fun. Not just fun. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Encourage your teenagers to participate in a sport or activity when they go to high school. They'll stress less and smile more. And they'll be laying the foundation for a happier, healthier future. 
This message presented by the Georgia High School Association and the Georgia Athletic Directors Association. Attention, radio station listener. This might make you say, Oh my god! <laughs> Get this station in 1500 live station plus a custom station you can create all in one right now. Download the free app now at iHeartRadio.com. Oh my god! Hi, this is Nisi Cooper with the number one party bus company in the city, Go Go Party Bus, and you're tuned in to the number one rated business show with KC Pride. <laughs> And we are back right here on the Real 1100 AM iHeartRadio, taking in all over the world. I'm your host, KC Pride, single-handedly bringing back light-skinned men all over the nation. In studio with me today, <laughs> the one and only Rodney Perry. Uh, I'm man. actually light-skinned today. You like light-skinned today? Today, I am, actually. Absolutely. See, I, I got everybody doing a light-skinned click, I'm telling you. Hey, man. <laughs> We trying to bring it back. I'm not mad at you, dog. We ain't had it since I'll be sure. Morris Chestnut came, messed it up for all of us with Chesna all that old came. friends. What was the brothers or the West hood or whatever? Nice. Wesley Snipes, Morris Chestnut, they did a lot. <laughs> they did a lot for us. But you know, we we all one one nation under the <laughs> you know. Hey, we can't do it without y'all, man. Who's gonna who, who gonna pull all the chicks? <laughs> <laughs> now tell me this, man. Tell me about the merchandise, man. This is a beautiful surgery you brought for me today, man. Man, I, I just wanted to grab some, try not to come to people's the house empty handed, <laughs> you know. And uh, uh my, my buddy and I, we came together on that that okay. shirt. I one one of my friends designed it, and the other one printed it, man. And I'm uh, a you a screen printer. You might have just you might just worked him out of a job. Hey, I'm gonna try to. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. <laughs> You know, I'm but, definitely gonna try to. I mean, I always like proximity. You know, I like people close to me. You know, oh, yeah. you, you being in the city that make a difference. Oh yeah. But um, uh, the the what we got going on is raising these kids, man, and and touring. Uh, I'm in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, in a couple weeks on the 17th, 18th. Okay. And and then uh, I'm working New Year's Eve in Florida, down in the Orlando area. I'll be in Florida for the New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. All right. And um, what do they got going on in Atlanta for New Year's? No, Orlando. Orlando. Orlando, Florida. Um, it's, it's me. It's me. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm headlining. You know, uh, I don't know what else they're doing. Uh, we'll be in that in that area, and then um, Detroit on the seventh of January. Uh, you know, my my most current tour dates, and um, I got the the retreat that's coming. At okay. The top at, at the first quarter, which is uh, uh never deny, never deny uh next level. Now, how do people get involved with that retreat? Because that retreat sounds interesting, man. I, yeah, I'd man. like to be a part of that. Um, website, RodneyPerry.com. You can email me, Rodney at RodneyPerry.com. That's the best way. And uh, we're going to have a virtual component to it. But I wanted to keep it small okay? because I think sometimes you go to these festivals and stuff, and it's it's so packed that you don't get enough out of it. Oh, yeah. But I'm like, we keep it to 25 people, you know, and... And I'm gonna um, Skype in some of the some of my, my presenters. Okay. You know, I I I'm, I got a, 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 a um, excuse me, I got a, a line out to Kevin Hart. Okay. I got a line out to Monique, and if I get one of them to to be my keynote speaker, then everything else gonna fall in line. Oh yeah. So uh, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I can get it done. Oh, I know you can, brother. And then I, I got a book. I got a book that's on Barnes and Noble, Amazon. Now, what's um, the name of your book? Uh, Rodney Perry moments on my journey. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with my story, but five years ago I had a stroke. Oh yeah. So the fact that I can sit here and cycle through my brain and and be able to remember stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> when I can't remember stuff, I uh, still fifty though. And uh, <laughs> I anyway, got a good friends with stroke survivor, so I know what you go through, bro. Yeah, it's, it's not it's not a lot, and and to to be able to come back and, and have your your faculties, you know, it, you just don't happen every day. So um, it's it's a, it's a blessing, and I cover that in my book. I cover losing my mom. We lost my mom. She not dead. She in the mall. No, I'm joking. That's a bad joke. <laughs> uh, no, but we lost my mom a few years back. I talk about that. I talk about working with and for Steve Harvey, with and for Monique, with and for uh, Said the Entertainer. And uh, I'll just cover my life, man. And uh, it's a real easy read. It's only like 110 pages. But I wanted to give something to my kids to have something to know what their dad was about. That's beautiful. Years from now. Yeah. That's important too, because like I tell folks all the time, I didn't know my I didn't know my father like that. Mm -hmm. Even though I did have years with him, I I didn't know him like that. So I am yeah. so intentional about you? making sure yeah, yeah, my you? kids know me. Yeah. Now now, yeah. let's talk about the stroke for a second, because you you at the top of your game, and then you have something like this happens to you. What is that like? Um, 
it's a wake up call. It's a wake up call. Like, um, I'm I'm on the road, Denver, Colorado. I'm talking to one of my boys, and he's telling me about another friend of ours that had a stroke. Wow. And as he's telling me this story, I'm like, yo, I feel like that right now. And so I dragged myself over to Walmart, stuck my arm in the sleeve at Walmart, checked my blood pressure. My blood pressure was 221 over 140. <sighs> a smart man goes to the hospital right there. Emergency room. <laughs> I went and did two shows that night. Damn. Kill. I still got him on tape. You sound like me. <laughs> yeah, I got two shows, man. I went and did the two shows and, and took myself to the emergency room that night. I'm a vet. So I went to the VA and um, I was there for the next 70 days. Wow. I see you for uh, eight days and they come out of there and I was in rehab for the rest of the time. My left hand was contorted. I had, was in a, confined to a wheelchair. And more than anything, man, I just learned some life lessons, you know, over now, that period of time. Now, one one biggest thing, and, and what makes it so scary, and, and honestly, my father passed away from a, a stroke back way back in uh, 2003. But uh, one of the biggest things is it's it, it ain't really nothing that, that give you some type of trigger, say something wrong. You know, it, it's right. it mean, just well, and it don't really hurt. The, the the it doesn't hurt, and and that's 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 very true. But the the American Heart American Stroke Association they have some some triggers, uh, uh, fast face face drooping. If you see, if you look at your face and it don't look right, it's like slide and feel like it's coming. Then you may you may be having a stroke. Face drooping, arm weakness. Okay. If, if your arm is heavy or or you can't lift it above your shoulders, that might be part of uh, the the indicator that you're having a stroke. Uh, speech slurring. Okay. If you, if you if you hear your if you noticeably hear your speech slur, that could be a stroke. And and if you hear any of any two of those things, it's time to go to the hospital. Wow. Because uh, a stroke can be stopped. You know they can they they have what they call stroke bust. They can send to oh, the yeah. brain and they can break, bust those clots immediately, and you can never suffer a stroke. And so it's uh it's one of those things that you know uh it, it's it was a blessing for me though at the end of the day. Just yeah. just 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 speak to it for one second because the simple fact it is so important for black men in this in our community. And we talked about this last night from a mental health aspect, but even from a, a, a just a health aspect because I know. I was going through a divorce. I was probably drinking way too much and this type of course of thing. we was. And <laughs> by the time I, I finally got to the doctor, she said, you're two weeks away from a heart attack, bro. You finna die. Yeah. So you might want to do something. So what, tell, what, what, what do you do to make sure that you stay on top of your health and you stay out of these, these predicaments or, or keep yourself out of danger? Because uh, you, you out late and you, you're traveling. And yeah, another great question, man. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, some people say, you know, you don't, yeah, I don't sleep. You know, sleep is for the week. No. Nah. Your ass need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you need to lay <laughs> down. You, you, it's like if, if you look at yourself as a giant computer, your your body recovers. You know, you reboot your computer at night when okay. you're sleeping. And so if you're not sleeping, you never reboot. You never get the new the new uh system update. <laughs> you don't get them you, updates. Huh? You don't get no update. You need an update. <laughs> you know, and God send an update every. You know, you need your update. And so. That that's definitely one of those one of those things. Get some sleep, rest, um, and uh, take your medicine. Yeah, you know, I, I was diagnosed with hypertension probably five years before I had my stroke. Okay, so I took it, and it affected my libido. Oh yeah, you know, had you met, I was like, hey, you take that pressure down, yeah. And I was like, I ain't taking it. <laughs> I ain't gonna be no Mister Salty walking in my house. But it was maybe the stupidest decision I ever made. And so to the men out there. You can always go to your doctor and rework your medication. Okay, but to just not take it is is absurd. But no, that that has always been the, the main complaint from black men. This mm -hmm. uh, I rather die. So <laughs> yeah, you rather die till you start dying. Amen. <laughs> <Hey, man. laughs> you be like, you know what? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> now, uh, as far as mental health, because you said you you dealt with losing a lot of folks, and I know I'm in that age bracket now, over forty. And I'm losing friends left and right, and it don't feel oh, good when right. you, especially folks your age. You know, it really hit home. How do you, how do you support yourself and, and, and stay mentally fit? Man, you know what? I don't know how I make it through sometimes. Don't <laughs> and and I'm, I'm being honest with that because, you know, as of late, you look at like, like you said, if you talk to a friend on the phone, they go, "Hey, you seen so and so?" You'd be like, "What? Yeah, are they gone?" Yeah, scared. Yeah. So it, it's that immediate thing. Um, I think just acknowledging that that you could be off key. Okay. Acknowledging the fact that you could be not your right self, you know, and 
you know, whether, whether, whatever you do for a living, you know, as men, a lot of times we like, we don't have the luxury of being, uh, uh, of, of having a mental miscue. Okay. But the reality is that you want to be the best you, you can be. Oh yeah. And sometimes that require getting some help. Amen. Now you also say 2022, you got a brand new movie coming out. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, spend a few minutes and, and, and talk about the movie that you got coming out. You said it's Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday. So, so get this. My 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 mother who's gone now, my grandmother's gone as well. They always say you're gonna be you're gonna end up in the pool pit. I know you is. The last four things I've done been me playing preachers or uh, priests. Wow. And so this movie, Easter Sunday, uh Joe Coy is a star. He has a, a all Filipino cast, and except myself and Tiffany Haddish is in it as okay. well. Okay. And um I'm playing a priest in this movie. So I don't want to talk too much about it. <laughs> think about movies, you could be in it. And then your ass could not be in it. You know, they cut you. Be like, man, what I thought I was. Like? I hear you. So you don't want to. You don't want to have this, that face. Now, any other? Uh, you, uh, you want to? I used to be in that face. <laughs> we'll talk about that after. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, what's it like to work with Tiffany Haddish? She's like a real down to earth person. Oh, you know, Tiffany. I, Tiffany, I did, the first gig she ever got paid on, she and I were on it together. Okay. So we, I go back with Tiffany before she made any money. Okay. And uh, she's still the same, <laughs> still a great human being. And she's still like her success is due to her being a nice person. Wow. She's just a great human being. You don't see that a lot on camera. <laughs> she's just dope, man. So uh, <laughs> kudos to her. Oh, yeah. She seemed like a great person. Well, uh, what what else you got coming up in 2022, man? It's time, man. Just go and put it all out there for everybody. Well, you know, I don't know everything. I ain't, I ain't lived it yet. But but it, it's definitely a, a, the, the movie is the biggest thing right now. Okay. The movie, some TV work. Uh, uh, I, hopefully, my character reoccur uh, on our kind of people. I, I'm really excited about this show because it's a hit show. Okay. And uh, other than that, man, I just, at the end of the day, I just want to tour, man, tell jokes, bro. And the Tyler Perry stuff coming up soon? Well, you know, I did the movie with Tyler Perry, my dear big happy family. People be thinking I got that man number. I don't know that man. <laughs> I, I love him though. He's a good guy. He told me he almost didn't hire me because my last name was Perry. What? I did that same thing you just did. Like, what? <laughs> like what's wrong with Perry? You lose your damn mind. You better <laughs> shut your mouth, Tyler Perry, about swing on you. Oh, I get it now. All right. <laughs> yeah. No, but but get this. So we in his house, me and my wife, he had us all over there. We, I was shooting this movie with him. And you couldn't take a picture in his house. <laughs> he had something set up in his crib that made all your pictures come out black. Wow. I'm like, you rich. <laughs> your ass rich. He been blocking my phone. You rich, Tyler Perry. <laughs> Tyler Perry rich. They say they, they say he don't play. You come to the studio, you come down there, you ain't talking to him. You can't get nowhere close to him. You better not bother him. You see him walking down the hall, don't uh, say nothing to him. Yeah, you know, when you're rich, you be scared of COVID. It's us poor folks that don't want a man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that, brother. Now, uh, if somebody once again wants to get involved, man, they want to be a part of the retreat, or if they just want to follow you, man, how do folks get involved with Rodney Perry? I'm easy to find. All social media is Rodney Perry Live. My email, Rodney at RodneyPerry.com. Email, Rodney at RodneyPerry.com. And if you uh, want to stay tuned with the number one rated business show, <laughs> follow me right on Instagram at I am Casey Pry. You can follow me on Facebook at I am Casey Pry. Keep up with Real 1100 AM iHeartRadio. Uh, and we are out. We will be back Friday with Is me, Jeff Bill, Marvin Wilson. Uh, yeah, it's all with. Oh, man, I'm going to stay. Ah, well, we're going to hold him <laughs> on for another hour. So if y'all want to sit right, <laughs> we'll be back on Friday. We'll see y'all at three. Bye. Okay, we are running a car drive right now to help veterans all across America. So if you have an old car, truck, or van, even a motorcycle or an RV sitting around, you can right now give it away and help the vets. They really need your help. And your car will help support the vets and their families. And guess